Well, hello then, I do hope you're all well. Now, oh, here we have in this video our James Cleverly FCDO. Don't ask me to go through it, it's long winded, but you know what I mean. Who, while he was busy marking his own homework in the last video, James Cleverly is hit with a zinger question by Lord Wood in this one about how will the DUP handle from James Cleverly news that the Northern Ireland Protocol was not only being treated like a dodgy watch, so to speak, and that they didn't vote for this nonsense and told them that the situation we're in now was always going to happen. And uh, let's just say James Cleverly again was left flailing in the wind again. And I have to say, watch the guy's face behind him. It's a picture, I have to say. Thank you, Lord Chair, and nice to see you, Minister. Um, can I just pick up on Lord Jay's last question and just clarify something you said? Did you were you saying that you the government decided not to invoke either Article One Six Eight of the Withdrawal Agreement on Arbitration, or the Article Sixteen of the Protocol on Permissible Safeguard Measures because the the problems that you have with the Protocol are more fundamental than either of those provisions would allow for? Well, it's the, 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 the challenge we've got is that we've now had a couple of years of the implementation of the protocol, um, and, and, that is, and that is causing problems. And as I say, there's, there's pretty much um, a widespread agreement that that is causing problems. Uh, the proposals that have been addressed, uh, the, sorry, the proposals have been put forward by the Commission thus far have all been about changes to the uh, implementation. As I say, our, our, our position that those proposed changes would make it worse rather than, uh, rather than better. Um, and, uh, and, and as I say, the, 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 uh, the changes that we feel are needed to address this are changes to the protocol itself. And so, um, so that's and, and that's what and that's why we've 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 come forward on this way. Um, sorry, please go on. Sorry, well, I, I'm just slightly puzzled though because after after a couple of years of, or a year or so of talking about possibly invoking Article 16, the government has now said actually there's more fundamental issues here which need the protocol to be rewritten, as you've just said. But the prime minister has been saying now for a few weeks that these adjustments are purely trivial. But how can you reconcile the fact that the Prime Minister sells the Protocol Bill as trivial adjustments, unquote, and, and provide a justification for it, which talks about how impossible the Protocol is to implement? I think he's got a point. <laughs> well, I think small things can... I mean, any watchmaker will tell you that, that small things can sometimes be very significant. And we are... We, we think that the proposals that we put forward are quite modest... Um, and that with some modest changes to the protocol, we can resolve the issues in a sustainable way that means the, uh, the Northern Ireland, Ireland, GB and the EU can all get from this what we need and want, which is seamless trade north-south, seamless trade east-west, protection of the single market, and also from the UK's point of view, to make sure that we protect the hard won gains in the Belfast Good Friday Agreement. Thank you. I, I guess any watchmaker would agree that parts of a watch are small, but that doesn't mean that they're trivial, but that's another question. Can, can I ask you a related issue about, about um, the commitment in the withdrawal agreement of Article 5 is, quote, to refrain from measures that could jeopardise the attainment of the, of the uh, withdrawal agreement? Is that being fulfilled by this protocol bill? Uh, yes, I've just been reminded that actually one of the one of the explicit goals of the protocol is the protection of east-west trade between GB and Northern Ireland, which is the very issue that we, uh, I think, demonstrably we can see is not working. Thank you. Can, can I just just report on the question? But what about the phrase refrain from measures that could just jeopardise the attainment of the, of the withdrawal agreement? Is, is there not a, given the reaction to the European Union, that's prima facie evidence that surely there is some jeopardy being instilled by this protocol bill? Well, I suppose the challenge is that, that, that we, are, we are highlighting a, a, uh, an explicit uh, objective of the protocol bill, which is not being achieved. 
Um, and we're looking to get resolution. I completely understand the point that you're making on this. This is why we have said we are very keen to maintain negotiation, because ultimately this is about making sure, as with all negotiations, either everyone's winning or nobody's winning. Um, and we are very keen to, to get resolution on this so that the elements of the protocol that the EU value are protected um, and the elements of the protocol that the UK, both GB and Northern Ireland value, east-west trade being the most obvious one, is also protected. And we're going to have to find something that synthesises both those uh, positions. Thank you. And maybe lastly, if it's OK, I, I wonder what you say when you talk to DUP representatives who, who, after all, didn't vote for this withdrawal agreement precisely because of the thing that you're now citing as the problem with the protocol, that it has introduced a, a commercial border in the Irish Sea. I mean, the, the European Commission also warned that that would have to be the consequence of it as well. Lots of other politicians across parties did. What, what, what's your line when you talk to the DUP about why you've now agree, why you now agree with what they said in advance of the withdrawal treaty being passed? Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but he's just, uh, that's just a zinging of a question. <laughs> well, as I say, the... the, the... The, the challenges that we have seen have been around uh, implementation. I know there's disagreement about the exact numbers, but I think everyone would agree that there is a order of magnitude difference between the scale of the uh, external EU border trade when it comes to Northern Ireland, uh, you know, uh, GB Northern Ireland, and then into Ireland, compared with the volume of checks. So there, there is a disproportionality there that is that is obvious it is causing problems um and um the uh, the the i mean i suppose it's always difficult to uh, to to prove a uh, you know an alternative reality but i think it could have been implemented in a way that did all those things but that's not what has happened and we have to deal with the world as it is and the way things are at the moment is that east west trade is being detrimentally affected. That is one of the that is one of the explicit objectives of the protocol. That therefore needs to be fixed, uh, and we are putting forward proposals, you know, uh, well thought through, pragmatic, and we think realistic proposals that could address the concerns of the Commission with regard to the integrity of the single market. And we also think address the current. Uh, uh, problems in the facilitation of east-west trade uh, between GB and Northern Ireland. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Thanks. Thank you, Lord Wood. And we come to Lord... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice his face, but I didn't while I was recording it, probably because I was too busy admiring the Zinger question. But I did fall about in hysterics when I were sort of like um, editing and that stuff and his face. He didn't look too impressed, did he? <laughs> but I have to say, a great question and well done, Lord Wood. And take a bow. <laughs> right, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and take care.